Hey, so I thought I'd do a video on the equipment that I'm using and I'm gonna use for all of this. Uh, right now, this is my home setup. Hopefully in the coming months, I'll move to uh, an office um, or somewhere that's not my bedroom. And I've got a heck of a lot more equipment uh, that's currently just in storage that I can't get to uh, because of restrictions, because of lockdown. Um, Right now, you'll see there's a still on the screen and a picture-in-picture. -picture. I'm doing all of this live because I'm using an ATEM Mini, which is the Blackmagic Design's uh, really incredible um, multi-camera switcher, four-camera switcher, um, perfectly designed for um, this uh, and also live streaming. Um, there is the... Uh, ATEM Mini Pro, uh, which is available right now. Um, I didn't go for that. Two reasons. One, th at the time of getting an absolute nightmare um, to try and get one. And um, two, for me, this does what I need uh, for the purposes. Um, I don't need to see um, camera previews and I don't need to have an encoder built in because of my limited ability to stream anyway. I can cross that bridge when I can when I come to it. But right now, this device is absolutely wonderful um, uh, for what I'm doing here. So if I just move to uh, my main camera and switch picture and picture off, hey, um, this camera you're watching me on is a Sony A6300, uh, just with the uh, base lens that comes with it, the um, I think it's 16 millimeter to 50 millimeter little zoom thing. Perfect for this. I'm using autofocus. I would never use autofocus in any situation in my entire life. However, this is when I will use autofocus. I'm not going to bother uh, doing any form of manual focusing or just leaving the focus uh, to go out and blurry. I, I like a sharp image. Um, but that's a camera I've used for a long time. Um, I've now, uh, just for stills really, and as a real backup, because my main camera that I've used shooting professionally has been a Sony FS700 for many years. Um, I'm a big fan of Sony cameras. I started off with Sony Mini DV. Sony, Sony uh, the next camera I used was uh, University, was this uh, bad boy, which I've actually hooked up to the Black Magic and have actually used in some of my trials and works really well as a camera just to uh, capture a wide. But that was my second Sony camera, my Mini DV. TV once uh, trapped in my office, uh, office, my orifice, my office at the university I work at. Switching to another Sony camera, we've got a uh, A7S2 uh, with us here. Hello, um, this is uh, my second camera, which I'm going to be using just to show my setup um, and what I've got going on here. Um, but this is the power of a Blackmagic uh, Atom, which is really wonderful tool to have. I can be crossfading as well as also cutting. Uh, well, let's crossfade and then cut, um, which is quite good fun. Um, uh, especially, uh, any, no, um, no, there's no, no reason. It's just good fun. Um, so this is my setup right now. I've got a uh, video mic uh, micro. Uh, it's a Rode Video Micro, I think is the name of it. Just a tiny little microphone in there. I have the dead cat on just to help eliminate some of the noise in this room because it's an attic room and it's quite boomy. Um, uh, I've already I put a load of uh, EQ and various things on on my ATEM uh, Mini just to improve the sound. Um, but wonderful just little microphone that I've had for quite a while which uh, normally sits on top of my X A6300 but I've got myself an arm just to bring it in. Um, mainly because I'm, I'm building this setup for a couple of reasons. One is uh, because I wanted to start um, build, creating content like this um, but secondly just so I can make sure I'm delivering the best possible experience to students when I'm teaching them come um, the semester A start uh, in the autumn. And so high quality sound and good images is one of the most important things um, I can do to make sure the experience uh, is wonderful for them. Um, I have some lighting up here. Um, lighting is crucial when you're doing um, any form of video work. Without light, it just becomes radio um, or just a really noisy, horrible, mushy image. Um, but one of the reasons why it's really important for um, streaming um, if you are streaming is because the more information you can put inside that camera um, uh, rather than the camera having to fight to try and find um, lum lum luminosity uh, values, um, 
the less work the encoders need to be working on. Um, so, and there's less likely for lower end cameras, especially webcams, for it to have like a blurriness to it, which is the shutter speed slowing down to try and let in more light. Avoiding that blurriness, because blurriness just adds a heck of a lot more information that your um, encoder needs to work on, which is one of the reasons why having a higher frame rate or um, faster shutter speed does work for streaming, though I am really into classical cinematography where my shutter speed is double that of my frame rate. Um, uh, I might change that when I start getting into this more. I I don't know, but that's what my cameras are set to right now. Um, although I need to actually go into my A10 Mini and just have a little quick look and say, yeah, so I'm on 1080p, 25 frames a second. So it should be respecting the shutter speeds of the cameras that I'm working with. Because one of the amazing things about the A10, I'm just going to move myself over here, it's my next head. And one of the great things about the A10 is it takes in all these different camera feeds and it uniforms them. So that's why I can use my old Sony. Uh, it is HD, but it ain't full HD, even though it might suggest it is. No, it doesn't. It just says HD. It's a weird four, uh, 1440 um, by 1080 HD, like a weird pixel anamorphic, so the, uh, not lens anamorphic, which is what everyone loves um, in a lot of cinematography. It's, it's a weird digital one that stretches the pixels out in post-production or internally, which is nasty. But this uh, wonderful device conforms it all. So I've got my 1080 stream from my uh, A6300, my 1080 from my A7S2, my um, uh, 1440 by 1080 uh, through that Sony Handycam, and it will just churn out a 1080, a 1920 by 1080 um, <clears throat> resolution image, 25 frames a second. These could all be shooting at different frames a second as well, um, different shutter speeds. It'll conform it all. Um, and it's that's that's one of the reasons why I, I really like this device and why I've gone for this over a capture card um, and the ability to have multiple cameras means that I can, when I'm delivering teaching, uh, have my camera showing the um, uh, the uh, room that I'm working on, the lighting set I'm doing, and then there's a picture in picture. This could be the um, camera that I'm actually lighting to, so my main camera, and then you can see me moving lights around and you can see uh, what's happening and how things change. Um, my key light right now that I'm using is just a newer um, LED panel, a really cheap one from Amazon. It's bi-colour, but I've got it to daylight. I almost always use um, lower end uh, LEDs in daylight because cheaper LED technology, they got daylight balance um, color balance better long before they got tungsten. Tungsten's harder to emulate. And so to get a really good tungsten um, LED light source, you've got to spend quite a bit. But this is just a really basic dimmable uh, LED light running off mains. I think they're wonderful. I've now used them on two feature films, um, uh, low budget feature films, but still as a small light source, they do a fantastic job. They've completely replaced 800 watt um, fixtures, uh, tungsten fixtures on um, my sets now pretty much. And um, they're just really great. Little utility light, shove them anywhere. But for the purposes of this and a, a, a vlog and uh, for what I'm doing uh, here, demonstrating equipment, this is a wonderful, wonderful tool and I think does a, a great job of being a nice key light and you'll see without it, uh, if I can find it, well, oh, that's the difference. That's what's going on with me trying to uh, have a chance of uh, balancing to that window, which is just not, not happening at all. Um, and uh, this is actually a bit of a better image now that I don't have uh, that on, but that is because this, when I'm here, I'm lit by my kicker. Um, it's not a backlight, it's a kicker. And this is a uh, tile light, a uh, blind spot gear tile light. That's not really showing it brilliantly, but there you have just running off an NPF uh, Sony battery. Um, I think I've got it only on level three. That's just highlighting when I'm on my main shot, just lifting my um, uh, and shaping my face a bit there. Um, a really good technique. And in the background, I've just got a tungsten um, LED um bulb, a uh, decent tungsten LED bulb or, or warm white as they will probably say in the uh, in the shops. Actually, I think it's free 430 Kelvin, free, yeah, 4,300 4, 4, Kelvin. Um, so it's not quite tungsten. It's a little bit more closer to daylight, but that just adds a bit of color in the room. And if I bring my key source back, and this is only on half, I think. If I just dim, yeah, there you go. 
So you can go up full, it's a bit too much. I'm, I'm, I know some people quite like that bleached out effect, but I'm not a fan. So that is my setup. Um, I've got a microphone, you two lights, that's all. The, the light coming through the window, uh, the light uh, in the background, it's just here. I've got a couple of mirrors uh, and some pictures on the wall behind me, some house plants around me. You can see plants, my cowboy hat, those who know, know. Um, and a load of batteries and whatever the heck is in the background. Um, the mirror I quite like uh, because it kind of just adds a bit of a dimension, but I quite like that you can see the microphone, you can see all of the different stuff going on. And that does remind me, so I'm recording absolutely everything onto a uh, Blackmagic um, Video Assist. Uh, it's the 4K one, so seven inch, uh, not recording 4K. Um, we could, uh, no, we can't record actually. I could record 4K out of um, these two cameras, but I can't, there's no native 4K out of the um, Blackmagic, it's just, um, uh, 1080 through the HDMI. Um, the way this works, if I was streaming or um, teaching through various tools, is it's got a USB-C out into my MacBook Pro, um, which uh, tricks the, the, the MacBook into thinking it's a webcam. And that uh, means I can use it on um, Skype um, if I wanted to. I can use it on all sorts of tools and make really professional presentations, or I can use it for teaching, the way I uh, suggested. Um, use utilizing picture in picture and uh the the main camera so that's the kind of idea of how i'm gonna uh look to deliver practical teaching um and also in the new year and uh, in the academic year but also how i'm going to do some demonstrations when i do do them on on this um here um on screen you can just see the software um pretty powerful tool i can actually uh rather brilliantly hook up my laptop to the ATEM. Once it's reg finished registering, um, I can then uh, move in and you can see there is my controls. So what's useful is I can do, do software demos um, as well as um, actual practical demos. If I go to that, you can see here I am editing the video I shot just before this. Um, so I could do some editing tutorials. Um, I've just made a little quick graphic in After Effects, I could do a tutorial on that. Um, so yeah, that's my setup. This is what I'm gonna be using. Two simple lights, natural light, um, practical light background, simple microphone, um, not breaking the bank, just spent some time EQing it and working on it in um, uh, in uh, the uh, ATA mini control panel. Um, and I'm recording to Blackmagic, uh, just recording at ProRes LT, a um, couple of other cameras. And one of the smart things is a little bit fiddly um, on the um, on the uh, actual, if I just, bring, no, I, I wanna stay on this one. It's a little bit fiddly on the controls. Yeah, let's, let me go over here. So if I just bring myself back here, I can also pop myself in any single corner wherever I want, uh, which is quite handy, but, um, if I want to change the source of my um, picture in picture to my second camera, and then I can go back to here if that's the way I want it. So this is a great way. So when I'm um, delivering demos of the, the uh, of me moving around the room, and if I've got someone I'm filming um, who's light, who I'm lighting, or if I'm lighting objects, this is what it would look like. This is the main camera, uh, and then you'll be able to see me moving around and moving my lights and so on and so forth. Um, on this uh, on this shot and I can change things and if I want to it's a little bit fiddly I can increase the size of the picture in picture but what's annoying is when uh, so I could do that now if I just increase the size and then just change it I can move that at, oh wrong way come back why are you not going back <laughs> There we go. Okay, um, so I can move the picture in picture around, um, but the problem is as soon as I click the buttons on the ATEM, it goes back to a default. There is ways to work on that using macros, but that's a whole big world um, on the ATEM Mini and the world of uh, broadcast multicam that I'm not ready to go into yet, but I will look into. Um, I think that's it. Um, really, as always, um, you know, let me know what you think. Please comment, um, suggest other things you might want from me. I'm I'm a trained uh, teacher in cinematography, so I can deliver demos. I, I, I'd rather be um, avoiding kind of the teaching I do um, at the university I work at, because if you want that, that's what going to university is for. And um, 
but I, I want to engage. I want to engage with people. I want, I want to have conversations. Um, so let me know what you're thinking. Let me know what I can do uh, content-wise for you. Um, you can find me on all these different social media platforms. Um, I can look this way now. And so, uh, you know, on, on uh, oh, I've gone to completely the wrong one. What have I done? See, this is classic. You can see me trying to nail it and not. There's the social media platforms. Um, let me bring myself back to this camera so I'm not wrecking my neck. Um, so Twitter, Instagram, and of course the YouTube uh, channel that you're looking at here. Um, I do feel in the end that the best uh, method of, of use with this is uh, if you had me presenting and someone else actually controlling, looking at the laptop uh, and then someone else controlling the desk as you would and you can start to build up your team. Um, I think when I start to get a little bit ahead of myself and a little bit too complicated, as you saw just then, I get a little bit jumpy and I trip over myself. But I think I'm going to survive. And I've got this currently set up so um, I cue what I do and then cut by pressing the cut button rather than um, just hitting each button to move between. You can uh, change the way these things work depending on what you want to do. So you can see here I've got uh, a green cue. So if I want to go to the still, I've just queued up still and I can hit cut and it'll cut. Ooh cut and it'll cut <laughs> or i can do auto which will automatically do the different fades um, i'm going to queue up going to the next camera and i'm now going to do a really awful looking wipe there you go not too bad actually um and you can do some smart stuff like stopping it halfway through if you want to do some really freaky stuff um but that could be fun for some um picture in picture work if you uh had some split screen stuff let me try again oh nearly and then if i'm here I can do some interesting split screen stuff. Um, let me try it with, um, there you go. That's not, you know, that's a bit you know, interesting. I don't know. We'll find a use for all this stuff um, and uh, we'll work it out. Um, but if you're interested in more, subscribe. Um, please, please, please leave me some comments. Um, every YouTuber I ever watch says hit the like button. It really helps. No idea why. Um, uh, Thank you very much for watching and we'll, well, I will catch you in the next video. See you later.